Hey guys, and welcome to this little tutorial and tips video. As requests from some of the people that I talk to in Discord and in the comment sections, I'm going to create and show you all a video where I show a lot of the different decorations and techniques that I use to help increase the looks of my ships that are fairly easy and require little effort. To start off, let's do my turret caps and some of the details that I use during the making of it. The first step that I'm going to give is for the barrels on my guns. For these barrels, I like to use the new cram barrel textures. Not only does it give you a hollow barrels barrel, so it makes it to where you can just look down the barrel, and it just adds a little bit of a depth of field whenever you're looking at the cannons, but they also just have a good mesh, and you can easily size them up and size them down to create these little crevices. The way that you are able to make it to where these barrels are hollow is that you hide the decoration. If you don't know how to hide the decoration, whenever you're in the decoration menu and you're looking at this right here, so you see that we have barrel here, all you have to do is hit hide original mesh and that will allow it to where it will hide, of course, the original mesh as it states. The next tip that I give for turret caps is the use of ladders. Do not be afraid to use a bunch of ladders. If you compare it to other pictures of turret caps, such as these, you see that a lot of them have ladders that are up in the front of the turrets. They are a small and simple decoration, but adds to the depth of the turret cap. You can also do it on the sides, such as on this turret cap here. They may not be the actual ladder, but what I use for this are the railings. These simple railings here. These, whenever they are shrunk down and angled, act as a good little different kind of ladder to come up here, which I use on multiple different turret caps, such as this one and this one. The next tip that I like to give when making these turret caps is whenever you're making the angles, such as this. Normally, without the decoration, this is just, let me delete that here, it's normally just a transition with a four meter slope on top of it. But it's pretty easy to change that, considering that the key bind, which some may not know, which if you want to place the certain block that you have in your hand as a decoration, all you have to do is hover over it and hold down Shift, Control, X, and it will place it. And just little pieces like this where you smooth it out. So in this case, I'll push it up and extend it to two. Now that is a much smoother angle. Another tip I have is whenever making turret caps is always add some kind of detection on it. Detection on the turret caps is normally pretty good, but it's also good for looks. As you notice with a lot of normal turret caps, as you can see here, they'll have some sort of detection sticking out from the rear, as in range finders. So in this case, I have a range finder that sits up here, but it is hidden. Now you can do that either by just hiding it and then pushing the block that you use on it after you hit the hide original mesh, push it down to where it's invisible, or you can bind other stuff to it, such as this, which is just a little viewport, which is on some turret caps. But since a lot of the range finders are not big enough for some of these bigger turret caps, you can always just mimic them on there, such as this. And in these cases, I like to use the new interface screens from Cram and the 90 degree radars, which work pretty good as well as detection equipment, as you can see here as well. The interface screen and the 90 degree radar. And these kind of details here, these I like to use ammo boxes, which this one specifically is the two meter ammo box. Next, let's move on to some of the details on the ships. One easy way to increase the looks of your ship is by making the decking actually go all the way to the very edge of the ship. So in this case, as you can see, there is no edge of the lighter gray, which is the side of the hull, and the darker gray, which is the duck color, present. Doing this is pretty simple. And all you have to do, in this case, if you are not mimicking the deck or the hull itself, so in this case, I have beam slopes that are stretched out to smoothen out the hull. But you can easily do, such as the command I just gave earlier, 
the control shift X onto this block and then just move it. Set it to the left so it doesn't see the inside. You can also increase the height or move it up on the back. Another easy decoration that helps when it comes to the decks and adding the different details to help elevate the looks of your ships is Greeble, as what some people call it, or just random shit all over the decks. So in this case, these are just small material container and ammo crate mimics. And in this case, since I don't want to have to make these every time, I just prefab them. As you can see here, deck ammo box and deck material crate, it's very easy to just randomize it all over the place. Rotate it, twist it, whatever you want to do. And adding this periodically throughout the ship, and especially whenever in cases like you have a little AA emplacement, put a little ammo box next to it. Very simple, but just adds a little bit extra detail just to make it look less bland and empty on your ship. Another mesh that I like to use when detailing superstructures are the ammo containers to add just little boxes to hit that hang off the side, and also vents. The vents that I like to use a lot of the times, which you can also see on smokestacks as well, are the batteries. The batteries do a very good job, so like in this case, this is the 3x3 battery, which is of course adjusted to be to where it is taller and skinnier, but the mesh of the battery itself works very well as vents. Another thing I recommend doing, especially whenever you're making ships that are all supposed to be in the same style and look like they're all supposed to be in the same fleet, is going to be making standardized detection. So in this case, I have sub-objects like this one is the detection spinner, where I mimic it all and I put it onto all my ships. When it comes to the rigging, there is a rigging mod in the game, but I personally do not use it. There's nothing wrong with the mod, I just don't use it. But for me, if you don't want to use the rigging mod, I like to use the gas engine straight pipes. Stretch them out and cover them, which works really good as rigging. Another mesh that I like to use whenever it comes to smokestacks are the steam turbines. Of course, another prefab that you can make to put on all your ships are lifeboats. In this case, I like to use orange and white, and we have a little bit of detail by coloring the different beams on here and having mimic poles, which are slightly different sizes on there. Just a little bit of extra depth, but not super complicated, and you can literally just make this into a block or an oblique panel or such, hide the panel, and then prefab it as your lifeboat, which is what I do personally. Another tip when it comes to decorating and making the superstructures is actually the structure itself. A way to be able to get your superstructures to look like an actual superstructure in real life is by adding a lot of these decks that come off the side. The more of these kinds of decks that are spaced around that you have railings on, some of them having the solid walls, some of them having actual railings, the more of those decks that you add on, for the most part, is normally how you get the superstructure to look less bland and more how it's supposed to. So in this case, you can see all the different levels that I have. When it comes to making holes, making the holes proportional and smooth is always a deciding factor on if the hole looks good or not. So in this case, on this certain ship, I like to use and employ heavily, even on ships like that, I like using the 4 meter transitions. Or in this case, I use a section of 4 meter transitions, then we go to 3 meter transitions, where it's just a slight change in angle, and then back to 4. Then once we get back further, then I'll start spacing it out a little bit. So in this case, I have a 4 meter transition, then 4 meter beam, and then I'll make another 4 meter transition, 4 meter beam, transition, and I'll up it to 2 4 meter beams, transition, 2, 3, 4, and keep on going back. Even if you don't decorate over it to make it perfectly smooth, that still adds a lot more depth to the hole. It makes it look a lot better. So as you can see here, ignore that. As you can see how it gradually gets wider and wider and wider, same with this one here too. It's just going to have to take some uh, experimentation and getting used to how you build your ships and what style you go for. But for the most part, it works pretty well if you just use 4 meter slopes or even go from like a 2 meter to a 3 meter to a 4 meter for a while. And then a 4 meter slope, 4 meter boom, 4 meter slope, 4 meter boom, 4 meter boom. And normally, literally, all I'll do is just make a long beam.
I'll make just one solid beam, however, approximately however long I want the ship to be, grab my gun, and then I'll start with my primary loadout. So in this case, let's just say, this is how I want my gun layout to be. So then I have a general idea, I can get a general idea of how wide I want it to be, and how much armor I want, and how much I want out in front of it. So of course, these guys are way too close to the front, so then I will extend it out a little bit. Sure, that looks not too bad. So, mirror, and then begin from the bottom. Slowly start coming out. And as you keep going, I'm going to look at this and go, oh no, no, no. That's way too thin of armor. That's only like four meters of armor. Now, let's just say you want this to be a relatively heavier ship. But you can either expand it forward to make it a little bit wider, or you could also employ that same tactic of the three meter beam. So you could do just do this. So I start there, start coming out. There's my three meter beam, so I'll do that. And now I've got plenty of wide armor, or however much armor you want. And after I think that that slope is far enough, then I can start going, okay, well I want to start gradually increasing that slope, so I'll make a 2 meter gap, and maybe a 3 meter gap, so on and so forth as you keep going back, until you get to a width that you think is probably about as wide as you want the ship to be, and then you start doing the exact same thing that you did up here, but opposite and going backwards. Next, we will move on to some of the details that I use on my land vehicles. Also, for returning subscribers, yes, I have updated the camouflage and some of the details on some of these tanks. One of the first things that I recommend, especially whenever building a fleet of tanks, is make, again, standard detection equipment. So in this case, I started making these little 50 cal guns. This may not be detection, but I have this prefab. And as you can see, I start putting it on other tanks. This not only makes it look like they're all still part of the same faction, but also just adds to the detail. Next tip I have is when it comes to some of the meshes. So in this case, we again revisit the cram interface screen. The cram interface screen does really well, does a really good job at providing such such as this, like a glass or some kind of detection. And I also cover this as a more of like a purplish blue. Or if you don't want to use the cram screen, you can use window blocks and then have a piece of glass colored the same as that. Now it won't have the same gloss as the interface screen. This is a little bit older design, but this is like a view porthole. The next detail, which this can also apply to ship as ship cannons, is what parts you want recoiling back with the barrel and not. So as you see here, this front part of the barrel, of course, recoils back, but the base of it does not. But you see that it falls around with where the gun is aiming. The simple trick to this is to use is to put the mimics based on the actual mantlet itself. So in this case, it's way back here. So all that is attached to the elevation mantlet. That allows it to move up and down with the gun, but also not recoil back with the gun. Next tip I have when it comes to land vehicles will be the side skirts. In this case, as you can see, it is not a full block that is on the side. And that's because, well, it's not. And this is not me hiding the textures either. These are actually just applique panels that I have placed around. And the applique panels is normally what I use when it comes to side skirts. Because the thickness is just right to not be super, super thick for the side skirts, but also still provide you something to attach the decorations to. And in this case, I'll put down such as ERA blocks that a lot of tanks have on the sides. And in this case, I just use alloy blocks. When it comes to the RPG cages that sit around these vehicles, this is literally just the default railings. Stacked together, and then I copy and paste the decoration to different blocks. 
Other details that you can use on your tanks are exhaust vents. As we can see again, the battery returns. The batteries still provide a good vent that it has on that a lot of tanks have on the back of their of the uh, well of the body of the tank, as you can see here. And this can be applied to many other tanks, such as this one. We have both batteries, and then we also have those turbines again. Now you can make them spinning if you want, but there's no actual need if you don't want to. The next kind of detail that helps whenever making regular tanks is do you ever get annoyed whenever you place down a wheel and let's just say in this case you want to have it set up at this level but you want to have a block right above it and you don't want to have to mimic it well the easy because here's the here's the thing normally the wheel will sit right down there whenever you are placing it down but what you can do as you just saw you can change the spring length on it so in this case, I will push it up all the way. Since it's not actually going to be having any suspension uh, effect on it, you can push the wheel all the way up and have a block right up on top of it with barely any gap, which is what allows you to get this kind of a look. That's also effective when it comes to the rear wheels as well. When it comes to making external guns like this, if you want to make some kind of an ammo belt such as like with the miniguns and the Vulcans where they have the ammo belt that curves around I like to use the full or filled APS clips in this case I'm just using a 1 meter and that about wraps up the tips and tricks that I have when it comes to decorations and making your ships, tanks and planes have elevated looks when compared to other people and just the basic looks in the game Hope you all enjoyed it and I hope these tips were helpful. And thanks again for tuning in.